Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In the next three videos, we'll be talking about errors from Python and the error handling. So as we all know, errors are bad, right? But in order for us to fix the errors, we need to have a good understanding of the error itself and how those errors are being generated. So I prepared a quick bullet point here for today's video. So there are three types of errors in Python. The first one is the syntax errors, second is a logic error, and last is exceptions. So in today's video, we'll try to go through all three types of errors briefly and talk about when and how we can generate these types of errors. Then in the following two videos, we'll talk about how to handle Python's exception using try and accept block. And finally, we'll get to talk about the debugging using PyCharm with some examples. So let's get into this. Okay, so the first type of error that we'll be talking about is the syntax error. So as the name says it, syntax errors are the errors caused from the Python syntax, and we can easily generate the syntax errors by not following the Python syntax. So let me create a function here. So def test parenthesis colon. So we have the function definition here with all the correct syntax, but if we don't put any content inside the function and try to run it, then you will see a syntax error saying unexpected EOF while parsing. So let me try to run this. And as you can see, you are seeing the syntax error here. So this is basically complaining that you don't have any content inside the function. And that's why the Python is complaining with a syntax error. And similar thing can happen when we write a for loop here. So if I want to iterate through a list, and if I don't specify the variable that I want to iterate through in the for loop, so if I do list one with the three elements, one, two, three, and for empty in list one colon pass, and let me just comment this uh, dev test here for now. And if I try to run this, then it will throw a syntax error saying the invalid syntax. And the error will also pinpoint the location of the error. So in this case, this will pinpoint the membership operator in here because we did not specify the variable that we want to search in the list one. So basically the syntax errors are the errors that can be caused by the wrong syntax. And this error is the most common and is to fix because Python's interpreter will pinpoint the location of the syntax errors, as you can see here. And it's easy for us to just go to that location and change the syntax correctly. So in this case, I can just put a variable here for i in list one. And then I can also print the i here. And if I just run this one more time, then you can see the correct result being populated from this for loop. Okay, so the next error type that we are going to talk about is the logic errors. So the logic errors, as the name says it, is the error caused within our program because of the incorrect logic. And this logic error is usually generated by the programmers because programmers are the one who put the logic into our code. And when the size of the code gets large and complicated, this logic error is the most difficult error to detect because Python's interpreter will not complain about anything, but you know there is an error because you are getting the incorrect result. So let me show you a few simple examples of logic errors. So let's say that you want to create a for loop that prints out the range of numbers until 10 inclusive, and you want to only print out every other number. So the expected output that we have here is a zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And let me also fix a typo here as well. So let me also create a for loop here to show you for number in range, and then the start should be zero. And I want to stop at 10, and I want to jump every other two number. And then if I just print number here, then if I run this, then you can see that zero, two, four, six, eight printed out, but not 10. And because we are getting the result that we did not expect, we can consider this as a simplest form of logic error that we need to fix. So in this case, our logic of print 10 as the stop index causes this logic error because stop index is exclusive and we are getting every other number. So we should have specified 11 here. So if I specify 11 here, and if I run this one more time, then you can see that all the numbers that we are expecting is printing out, including 10. Okay, so then let's move on to the another example here. Let's say that we want to calculate a simple mathematical equation here. So the equation looks something like result equal to 2 plus 3 and divide that by 2. And then I want to print the result. And the expected output here is 2.5. So if I run this, let me just first uh, comment this so that we don't see the duplicate result. So if I run this, then you will see a 3.5 instead of 2.5. So what's going on here? As we learned in the integer video, we did not consider the order of operations. So by default, Python will divide 3 by 2 first, 
because division takes precedence over addition. So then it will do the division first and then it will add 2 to the result. And that's why we got 3.5 here. So in order to fix this logic error, we need to put the parenthesis for this addition so that 2 plus 3 can get the precedence over the division. So let me put the parenthesis here. And then if I run this one more time, then you will see a 2.5 here because 2 plus 3 got the precedence over the division here. Okay, so then as a last example of a logic error, let's try to implement a simple if block here to print out some messages about the result of adding two numbers. So let's say that we have two numbers here, number one equal to three, number two equal to four, and in below, I'm gonna create an if block. So if number one plus number two is equal equals seven, then I want to print out a message saying number is seven. And in below, I'm gonna have an else if, number one plus number two is less than seven, then print out another message saying that number is less than seven, and the last else if here, I'm gonna create a range here. So if six is greater than number one plus number two, and another greater sign, and I wanna put 10 here. So in this case, the range should be number is either seven, eight, or nine. So if we add number one and number two, the result is seven. So let's assume that we want to see the first print message as well as the third print messages because the result seven belongs to both of the expression. So then let's run this and see whether this generates the expected result. So if I run this, then you will only see the first print statement coming out. And this is a logic error uh, because we wanted to see both the first and third print statement printing out. So why is this happening? So as we learned in the conditional video, that when you have a conditional block like this with if and else if block, when any of the expression returns true, then it will instantly terminate the execution, meaning since the first expression was evaluated to true already, Python will not evaluate any of the expression down below. So in order for us to fix this logic error, we just need to create a new if block so that Python can evaluate this expression once again after it returns true in the first expression. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to just replace this else if with another if block here. So then now we have a two separate if block, the first one here and second one here. So if I run this once again, then you will see a two print message coming out, the first print statement coming out from this expression, and then the second print statement coming out from the second if block, which is here. Okay, then now let's take a look into Python's exceptions. So what is exceptions? Exception is an event that can happen when Python is executing your program and it encounters a situation that it cannot deal with. And because of that, the program cannot complete its execution. So we can basically think of exceptions as the errors that is caused during the execution that are not syntax errors. So the code that we write may be synthetically correct, but it still may cause an error when we execute them. So then now, let's try to go through some common exceptions that we can face, and let's learn about how to generate them. And by the way, there are many built-in exceptions in Python, so I will not be talking about all of the exceptions in this video, but only the most common ones. So from our previous videos, when we are talking about the indexing and slicing as well as the iteration, the most common error that we could see was the index error. So let's try to generate that error first. So let's first talk about how we can generate the exceptions manually. So every Python exception are a class instance, meaning we can just call that class using the keyword range. So let me just show you an example here. So I can put a keyword range here, and then you can just uh, specify the error that you want to throw. So in my case, I want to throw index error. So index error. And if I just run this as is, then you will see the index error being raised in the console. So then now, let's try to go through how we can produce this index error in our program. And the reason why I want to show you guys how to generate this error in our program is for us to get used to what type of errors will be thrown in which type of scenarios. So the first one is the string indexing. So if I have a list one with three items, so with a one, two, three, and then if I try to access the item, uh, that does not exist. So for example, if I do print list one square bracket and then index of three, which does not exist in the list one. And let me comment this range here. And if I run this, then you will see a same index error saying that list index out of range because we are trying to access the index that does not exist in the list one. And we've been also seeing this index error in our for loop when we use the range function to generate the index and try to access the element in the list that does not exist. 
So we can do the same thing here. So let me create a for loop here. So for i in range length of the list one colon and in below I want to first print out the, the list one of i so I can do list one square bracket of i and let me comment this first print statement and if I run this then you will see a one, two, three coming out, which is the element in the list one. So what happens if I do a plus one in the i here? And if I run this once again, then you will see a same index error coming out saying list index out of range because in our last iteration, the i is two. So if you do a two plus one, it's a three. And if you try to access the index of three in the list one, it's gonna throw this error because that element in that index does not exist. Okay, so then now let's move on to the next common error that we faced in our previous video, which is a key error. So let me just write the comment here, key error. So the key error will be thrown when you try to access a key that does not exist in a dictionary. So let me create a dict1 here, and then I can put some fake elements here, equal to two, and then if I uh, have a print statement here and try to access the key that does not exist in the dict1, so dict1 square bracket, and then I want to access the key of C, which does not exist in the dict1. And if I run this as is, but before that, let me uh, comment this so that we don't see the index error again. And if I run this, then you will see a key error specifying the key, which does not exist in the dict1 that you are referring to. Okay, so that was pretty simple. So the next exception that we're going to talk about is a value error. So, and this is a pretty common exception when you are trying to convert a value from one type to another, which doesn't make sense. So a simple example of this would be like when I try to convert our alphabetical characters into integers. So for example, I can do a print and then have an int function. And as the argument, I can put A, B, C, D. So what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to convert the A, B, C, D string character into the integers. So if I run this, so comment the, the print statement here, and if I run this, then you will see a value error saying invalid literal for int with base 10 ABCD. So Python is complaining because the ABCD to integer doesn't make any sense because this integer function can only take either number or string that can be converted to integer value. Okay, so we are moving along pretty fast. So then now let's talk about the type error type error. So this type error is raised when you try to create a data type with an incorrect format. So as we learned in the list video, the class list takes an iterable data type as an argument. So for example, I can do print list and then as an argument, I can put ABCD and string ABCD is an iterable data type, meaning we can actually iterate through each character one by one within the string. So if I run this, then you will see A, B, C, D all separated out as an each element in the list type. But if I try to put non-iterable data types such as an integer into the list class, so I can do print list and then put integer here, 15. And if I run this once again, then you will see a type error saying int object is not iterable because as we have learned, integer data type is not an iterable data type. And we can also create this type error with a dictionary data type as well. So let me create a dictionary here. So print dict, and then uh, as an initial try, I'm gonna put an actual correct dictionary here. So I can put A with one, and then B with a value of two, and then I can comment the previous ones. And so if I run this, uh, this uh, dictionary class will actually convert whatever the value that's inside this uh, parenthesis into a correct dictionary format uh, with a key and value. And since the dictionary data type is composed of a key and value pair, we need to actually insert an argument here with a key and value format just like how I did it here. So then if I try to put a list data type here, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna delete this and then put a list here and say one, two, and three. And if I run this, then you will see a type error saying cannot convert dictionary update sequence element number zero to a sequence. So what this is basically saying is that it was expecting an iterable. So we gave an iterable, which is a list, but the iterable that we provided is not a key value format. Meaning this first element one is not a key value format. And that's why it's saying that the element of zero, which is the first element, could not be converted into the dictionary format because this one is not composed of a key and value format. Okay, so we are almost done here. We'll just talk about two more common errors, which are the name error and attribute errors. So the name error is being raised when you don't have any variable declared, but try to access that variable in your program. 
So let me show you an example here. So I can first comment this and then let me create a variable here. So I can say variable one, set it equal to one. So it's an integer variable. And in below, I'm gonna have a print statement here and try to access the variable two, which I haven't actually declared. So variable two, and you can already see that the PyCharm is underlying the variable two in red because variable two does not exist in our script here. So if I run this, then you will see a name error saying name variable two is not defined. And let me show you another example of the name error. So let me first comment this, and then we can create a function in below. So def print something, and in here, I'm gonna print high, and in above, the print something definition, I can try to call this print something function. So I, I can do print, print something, parenthesis, and you can already see that it's in red because you are trying to access the function which hasn't been declared just yet. So if I run this once again, then you will see the same name error saying the name print something is not defined. Okay, so then finally, let's move on to the attribute error. So for us to fully understand this attribute error, it's best for us to use the class and its attributes as the example. But since we haven't talked about the class just yet, let me show you an example using the data type classes. So in our previous videos, we've talked about various different data types such as string, integer, list, dictionary, and so on. And we've also learned that each of the data type is a class. And the methods that we've learned for each data type are bound to that class. So for example, we have an update method from dictionary class. So let me create a dictionary data type here. So I can have a dict1 with a with 1 and then key of b with a value of 2. And for this uh, dictionary class, I can do a dict1.update and I can try to add a new element with a key of c and a value of 3. And if I try to run this, actually let me actually print the dict1 here. And if I run it, then you will see a new element with a key of C and value of 3 being appended to the dict1 because this update method binds to a dictionary class. Then now, let's try to call this update method on the list class and see whether that's gonna work or not. So I can have a list1 here with a 1, 2, and 3. And then I can have a list1 dot update and then I'm gonna have a dictionary here, D with a value of 4. And then I can do a print list1. And if I run this, then you will see an attribute error saying that list object has no attribute update. And this is expected because this update method is bound to a dictionary class, not the list class. Okay guys, that's it for this video. So in today's video, we've had a high level overview of different types of errors, including syntax, logic, and exceptions. In our next video, we'll talk about how we can manage the exceptions thrown by Python using try, accept, and finally. So please stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed already, please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in next videos.